everybody, it's Tyler here at the Pikes Peak Signature Event, checking in with 3743C Intellectual Idiots, coming in. Two event wins and an excellence award already as they enter this event, so off to a great start so far. Let's talk about this robot. Very aesthetically pleasing, by the way. I love robots that look good, but on top of that, uh, from their last build, it's been a couple months. They have a lot of great things that have been very consistent for them throughout the whole thing. Very fast uh, Kata for skills uh, competition. We'll be diving a bit more into a few other things as well, too, as we talk about this robot. Of course, the launcher, the hang, all this and more. Let's learn about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Alex, let's start talking about your iterations throughout the season. You know, over under the meta has changed so much as you've gone through this. What are some really big changes that your team has made coming into the signature event throughout the season? So we've had three full like build up from the ground bots so far. So our first iteration was a very slow catapult with a uh, with a very like large chunky intake like this, not unlike this one. We also had fold out wings like these ones here. But we did not have them angled yet because we did not because we didn't have it very developed. We went to our first tournament and it didn't go very well, so we started working on a smaller, more compact drive base. And the drive bases have always been the same with a six motor drive base that takes a bit more longer to code, but we can transfer the code e over. So after we got it done the first time, it was much easier to change. So we changed to a drive base, a six motor drive base with a almost BattleBots esque spinner to hit the tribals as fast as possible because that was our main problem was speed. We also changed to vertical slot, vertical wings to increase the stability and so that they didn't move at all when we were pushing tribals. And eventually we realized that the spinner was very inconsistent, that angled wings were a lot more helpful in certain cases and that an intake like was very helpful during uh, teamwork when we had specific tribals that were in hard to reach locations. And finally, that led us to this design with our horizontal bar hang, our vertical and horizontal wings, our nice, our nice chunky intake, the six one zero drive, of course, and this cat and this catapult esque launcher, which is programmed with a distance sensor, so that the second you ha have anything in front, it'll immediately fire. So it makes it a lot easier for us to offload tribals as fast as possible. So that's a good, uh, I think, overview leading up to where we are right now, but let's dive a bit more into those areas and specifically what you're covering for that. So uh, Anderson, uh, let's start out with that six motor drive. Let's flip it up, talk to me more about uh, that config and what you're doing for it. And then uh, anything you want to add into the wings that weren't uh, mentioned as well too. Uh, yeah, so we code using six motor drive bases. Uh, we use motor encoders. We found it's pretty consistent. And then uh, as well as the motor encoders, we use a gyro right here. And we can kind of make like a digital map of the field to code a little bit. And it just helps a lot with like time management because we know we're able to code very quickly. Uh, then I'll move on to the wings a little bit. So the wings, we uh, like Alex said, we started with just the uh, vertical wings, but then we found that for uh, skills. If Toby, you want to show them the 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 horizontal, these horizontal wings are locking, so they can't be back driven, and they're really helpful in skills when you're pushing like 30 or 40 tri balls. Uh, but we we decided to keep the. The, these angled wings on the side because uh, although these these are good at skills and teamwork these are really really for teamwork because what we found is like tri ball control like in the new like because uh, the day the game has changed a lot and because of this we uh, we found that like tri ball control like having more tri balls on your side is way more important than just being able to score 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 so these help push over the bar and as well as these are what we use to get through the portals because our, our robot, it's a very small drive vice, it's 12 by 12. And with these wings, it extends out to about, uh, I think it's 19 inches, so it rubs against the wall and we don't miss any tri balls while going through the portal. Something I want to ask you, you say you got a 12 by 12 drive base and you're pretty tall too, so how do you manage your CG to get over that barrier quickly and effectively? Uh, yeah, so CG, we've done a lot of, there's two main aspects that we use to change our CG. And that's this catapult motor and the intake motor over here. 
and we can kind of move those around. You, uh, previously, we used to have the, uh, the intake motor back here behind the brain, uh, but lately we've moved it up here because we found that our CG was a little too far back, so we moved it up for better hang. Blake, let's talk about the uh, intake, get that super wide uh, intake on there. Uh, any big changes that you've seen with that throughout the season? And uh, especially from a meta standpoint, you know, this game has evolved so much into bowling and single, sometimes single tri ball control for things. What has that meant for your team here, especially at the signature event? You know, so the intake, it's definitely more precise, sort of, when it comes to our strategy, the aspects we have to use. Like during skills runs is when we primarily use it to take control of single tri balls that have gotten out of control with the wings. And it's definitely kind of evolved. So our second iteration of this robot did not even have an intake on it. We relied solely on wings for ball control and there were a lot of strays that we missed and that cost us a bunch of matches having that small point difference that you have to even out by using the hang. So with this design specifically because it's a floating intake, um, it's able to oscillate back when we back up so we don't have to outtake every tri ball so it makes it much more efficient when we're trying to put it quickly into the goal and readjust so we can go back over the border and get more tri balls from the other side. Toby, I think one of the big things about your robot is this uh, really quick uh, launcher that you have on here. So talking about how quick is it going, what have you done to optimize it, and what do you expect to see out of, especially in skills here at this competition? Okay, so this catapult is 150 shots per minute. Um, it's compound geared, it's really hard to see, but we have a catapult compound gear all the way back inside the robot behind the brain and that gives us a little bit of uh, extra power when we need it it's not a lot of extra gearing but it really helps the motors from to keep the motors from overheating and then back in here also hard to see we have double slip gears and that increases that basically doubles our rate of fire so it for each rotation the catapult fires twice instead of once which is huge and that's how we get up to 150 shots per minute now, this catapult has a match loading tray here and a distance sensor here. So as soon as we place a tri ball on that match loading tray, the catapult will immediately fire. And that's really helpful for driver matches so our driver doesn't have to manage all the catapult and turn it on and off. The robot just does all that for him, which lets him align the robot a lot easier. Are you able to so, actually load that quick then as well too? Because you got to get those tri balls on as well. Yeah, so we've spent like... In the last two weeks, we've done probably over 200 skills matches, right. and we've spent countless hours just practicing match loading this. We can actually match load this catapult at full speed, 150 shots per minute. So our skills match load time is between like 18 and 21 seconds, and our um, in competition match load time is around 10 seconds. So, so I gotta um, ask you from skills then, what score are you hoping to get with skills uh, on that as well? Um, at this tournament, we're looking for really a 160 to 170 programming score and a 190 to 210 driver score. Looking forward to that and obviously going really quick. You played uh, as we're recording this a little bit after your first match. Great match for that as well, too. So I can't wait to keep seeing that going. We got to wrap up and talk about this uh, hang mech uh, that you're doing as well. So let's talk more about that. We're going to send it back to Alex. Uh, do you tell me uh, what you have for the hang mech? I think it's just very efficient and smooth watching that on the field. So our hang mech. Uh, is the really only uh, pole or hang focused device that we have in our robot. Most of this is focused around corralling and and manipulating the tri balls as easily as possible because it gets us the most of the points. It gets us the bulk of the points. However, in close matches, the hang is very very helpful, as it gets us a, as it gets us a near guaranteed, like sometimes even just 20 points flat when other teams don't have hang. Additionally. This blocker on, on top of the hang allows us to be a bit more competitively viable when you're playing on defense. And as well, we have a side hang to help when our team already, when our alliance partner already has a horizontal hang. So we can drive up to the side and still get our hang off so we can potentially get up to even 35 points. Well, Intellectual Idiots, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your team robot. Really looking forward to seeing what your performance is. I'm sure you are too. Uh, so good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for telling us about it and a phenomenal machine. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.
don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.